shooting anamorphic. So I've had the ISCO anamorphic uh, projector lens for about six months now. Um, so you have to have a taking lens with this with this style of lens. Um, so I um, I was using a Canon 50 millimeter for a while, but I recently decided to instead use a um, Russian Helios lens, the uh, $25 one you can get from Ukraine. And my thoughts on anamorphic um, on the indie level is that it's really not attainable. Um, it's not very good. Uh, it's very picky. And you're pretty limited on what you do with your f-stop. So um, pretty much with the, the, um, with the Canon lens, you could go anywhere from f1.8 uh, to... Um, you could, uh, with the Canon 50mm um, 1.8 lens, you can go anywhere from 1.8 to, to f8. Um, but anywhere above f8, you start to see the imperfections in the anamorphic glass itself. And um, it, it, it's, you lose a lot of sharpness. And you, you do see a lot of a grain on the, uh, like, like specks from the, from the anamorphic optic. You do end up seeing on the, uh, on, the, on the finished video. So it's pretty hard to remove that. I have written Photoshop uh, um, scripts that will remove uh, specs that are consistent in the same spot, but that's too much work in my opinion. So you have that limiting you with anamorphics. Um, another issue with anamorphics is just that the dual focus is a big issue. Um, what I ended up doing was basically recoding this lens and um, remarking it so the markings match the um, the Helios lens, and then what you can do is you just match the markings when you want to focus. So that means you have to figure out what the what your focal distance is, and the Helios lenses are in meters, so I had to mark this in meters as well. It's a German lens, so you have to you have to really pay attention to where both both focus focal distances are set on the anamorphic and the taking lens. Um, so you can't really rack focus with an anamorph with a cheap anamorphic solution such as this one. Um, it's just not possible to rack focus. It makes it pretty. It makes it pretty hard to do like maybe narrative cinema. Uh, you could do interviews with this, and it'd probably work just fine. Uh, but with narrative, um, you couldn't do any rack focuses or any follow focusing. So you have to set your focus before you roll. So that's um, that's not great. I don't. I I don't think that. Um, so I don't. I don't think that um, that makes it very practical to use an anamorphic lens. Um, but that's not really why I'm making this video. Uh, I want to talk about just anamorphics in general. Um, what the future probably holds for them. Anamorphics are pretty popular in mainstream cinema, and you have your you have your Zeiss uh, Master anamorphics, which are pretty great, from what I'm what I'm told but the more I think about anim like the reason people shoot anamorphic is that it has um, really great bokeh which is those back those background circle flares uh, not flares uh, background circles and when it's out of focus like at night you see the, the circles in the background with anamorphic it's oval shaped and that's pretty desirable in the film community um, and also these lens uh, anamorphic lenses tend to flare and people really like to see anamorphic flare. So um, that's why people shoot anamorphic. Now, the future of the film industry itself is heading towards a very, I would say, VFX-oriented um, direction. So uh, I don't think these lenses are good for vi visual effects at all. Um, I know the Star Trek films, the J.J. Abrams reboots, they've all been shot anamorphic. and. I'd love to kind of dig in and figure out how they did the visual effects. Um, the main re the main problem with anamorphics and visual effects is that uh, anamorphic takes your image and it squishes it in two times. So that means that your uh, for one thing your camera um, each pixel is basically taking the data from two pixels, 
And so if you have a camera that uh, subsamples at um, 411 or 420, then you basically have the color data of one pixel. Once you stretch out the anamorphic image, you have the color data from one pixel basically representing four pixels. So that means that um, any green screening you're doing is going to have a halo of whatever color the pixels, one of the pixels in the middle sees. So as far as green screening on anamorphic, I actually tried it. I'll pull up an example if I can find it. But green screening on an, on the GH4, which is the camera I use, just doesn't work on anamorphic because uh, your 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 color subsampling it's not it's not 422, it's 420. So you have one pixel sampling for the four pixels around it, as opposed to 422, where you have one pixel sampling for the pixel beside it. Uh, even 422 probably wouldn't work too well with anamorphic green screening. Uh, you pretty much need 444 uh, color sampling on a camera for anamorphics to work for remote visual effects. Um, so that so that uh, that pretty much limits anamorphic away from the um, indie community, and it pretty pretty much pushes it all towards the, the high end because you're gonna need it. You're gonna need a, a pretty high end camera to do 444 subsampling, and that's also gonna increase your data rate um, quite a lot. So the GH4 does do anamorphic uh, 4K, which when you stretch it out is kind of 6K. Um, but as far as your sharpness and your color sampling are concerned, I really wouldn't consider it to be a 4K or 6K image. I would consider um, the only way to make anamorphic work on the GH4 is to basically de-squeeze it and then convert it to a 444 uh, ProRes variant, uh, 1080p. Um, you really can't do 4K uh, anamorphics on the GH4, I would argue, because of the chromatic subsampling uh, being the way it is with where it's 420. So you're going to have a lot of... Um, edge um, miscoloration between different colored objects. Um, so it's, I wouldn't say it's useful for visual effects at all um, on the GH4. I think the GH4 is a decent camera for visual effects if you downsample with 1080p. Because um, then it's either, when you downsample those four pixels to one from 4K to 1080p, uh, it's almost like you're converting it to 444 because all those pixel data is condensed into one single pixel. So all those four pixels that were sampled at the same color are now down to one. So as far as 16 by 9 and shooting regular spherical lenses, I think the GH4 works great for visual effects, and um, and and work workflows that are similar to that. Or if you're if you want really like you can essentially when you transcode GH4 footage, you can basically transcode up and get more data rate out of 100 megabit per second video. But this is not true for anamorphic shooting. Um, now that is specific to the GH4. Um, but once again, even if, even if you have a 444 camera shooting anamorphic because of that 2 XD squeeze, you're going to wind up with the issue of, uh, each pixel is going to also, each pixel, pixel's color value is going to have to represent not only its own color value, but the pixel next to it. So it'll trans, it'll translate to 422, even if it's 444 four, four, four out of camera. So for one, that's a lot of data. And another thing is that's, um... You're still, if if you're really picky about visual effects, you're gonna have halo, you're gonna have a, a one pixel, one or two pixel halo, around uh, whatever you're trying to green screen out. So you're gonna have to down, you're gonna have to downscale to half of whatever the uh, native resolution you shot at was. So if you're shooting, um, if you're shooting forty ninety six by uh, whatever the, um, or it'd be twenty one sixty by is it thirty four forty whatever four three is. Uh, you're just going to have to divide that by two if you want a 444 pixel readout, which you would want for visual effects. So that said, Anamorphics, um, now they're still being used by J.J. Abrams, Quentin Tarantino, a whole lot of directors, but the way I see it is because of that issue, um, I think they're going to go away. I don't think we're going to see too much Anamorphics in cinema to come. Uh, it's just a prediction of mine. Um, I mean, it's I'm, I could be wrong. It's always possible. It's more than likely, but um, it's going to be a niche thing like film, just shooting film in general. Uh, I think it'll stick around with within the film, like the actual uh, film kind of shooting style. It'll it'll still fit around there. Um, 
in uh, kind of J.J. Abrams style and uh, Christopher Nolan and all of them. But as far as just mainstream Hollywood, I see Anamorphics disappearing because um, right now the whole industry is kind of moving towards a visual effects centered um, 3DS Max base that seems like with the way um, all the visual effects are, are headed, you know. Um, what was it? Uh, Independence Day Resurgence. Those, all those crowds were just CG crowds. So as far as blending, um, it's just much easier to blend um, aspherical footage with digital footage. Another reason is because um, of the way uh, anamorphic lenses ble breathe. Um, they kind of breathe and they change, they change actual horizontal and vertical distortion when they breathe. So as far as trying to reconcile that in a in a 3D environment like um, 3ds Max or After Effects or whatever you're doing, it's going to be hundreds of times more difficult to reconcile that footage opposed, as opposed to um, if it were aspherical. Because of the aspherical, when it breathes, it's not changing. You know, it's not a conversion process uh, between um, four by three stretching it. So it breathe it breathes better for visual effects. Um, so now the, f and another thing, reason why people shoot anamorphics, another reason why people shoot anamorphics is because, um, of the flares. Now flares, flares in general, they're pretty easy to, they're pretty easy to replicate on, um, in post. So as far as saying that anamorphics are going to stick around because of flares, I think is ridiculous. I don't think, um. I think they're going to stick around in the niche kind of niche market, but um, they're not going to they're not going to stick around because of the flares. Because uh, it's so easy to fake the anamorphic flares, and uh, there's you know red didn't Red Giant come out with a plugin for that, so that's um, that's that's not going to be an, an excuse for anamorphics to stick around. I think they look cool. I think they look great. Uh, the bokeh looks great, and that's going to be something that really focused directors of photography are going to go after. Um, but as far as the market in general, I think the market is going to kind of alienate anamorphics, and we should probably just start getting used to watching our movies in aspherical mode, because I think that's going to be an easier step. That's going to be an easier direction for the industry to go. It's going to be cheaper. Uh, it'll meet their bottom line, and... Um, and and back to the um back to the indie market um i don't think uh people should be unless they're really in for a challenge shooting this this style i have been shooting for like 6 months on this and you do get some good images um especially downscaled 1080p but um it's just too much effort to for something that's so like only purists are going to notice that it's shot anamorphic. It's something that's so um, kind of focused in our own world that we don't realize that the viewers the viewers don't care. Uh, um, the audience doesn't care. It, the general audience. I mean, the film people who are uh, interested in film are going to care, which is a growing amount of people. But I still think that a majority of your audiences aren't going to notice that you shot your your project on anamorphic or sh or, uh, or aspherical, but I think it'd just save a lot of headache um, to shoot aspherical. Um, I think I'm going to go back to shooting aspherical. Um, I'm I did do a lot of wedding videos uh, last year, and I never dared use this on a wedding video because I know that because that's kind of a, a the type of thing where you blink and you miss it, and I didn't want to miss any shots, which I knew I could with this because it's so hard to focus, uh, dual focus. Um, so it, I always shot weddings, yes, spherical. I never, I wouldn't touch anamorphics for something that's so running gun as that. Um, so it takes a lot of patience to deal with these lenses. And for most productions, I don't, for most indie productions, I don't see there being a reason to, to use these lenses. Um, it, cause it, it, it really does require a crew to, to use. And now you could get a, a diopter. A diopter to adapt this uh, that 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 is an option those are really expensive I mean a diopter costs more than this this whole system combined so uh, you could do that on the indie level um, once again you're gonna run into the same issues I was talking about with visual effects 
So if you're going to do something that's sterile and void of visual effects, which is which is not a not a bad idea, um, then I guess that could work for you. Um, but once again, as far as your end your end game, your end market. Oh, another issue with shooting anamorphics is your your uh, transcoding times. You are going to have to transcode all your footage into anamorphic mode, or you could convert it in Premiere. Um, it's not visual effects friendly in my opinion at all. So I would. I would avoid that and I would mainly focus on just getting a good story and um, get it, making it look n as nice as possible as an indie filmmaker. But this is not the way to do it. Uh, this is too much of a hassle in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, if you disagree, let me know in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching.